honor and remember all the family members and friends, both living and deceased, whose names appear on the Tree of Lights. In addition to the tree, a binder with all the names has been placed on the altar. Our celebrant for this evening's Mass is Father Matthew Brown. Father Matt is Associate Pastor of the Parish of St. Dominic in Oyster Bay. He is also finishing an advanced degree in theology at the Catholic University of America in Washington, D.C. In addition, I have seen him a number of times on the Catholic Faith Network. He is a busy young man, and we are so happy that he is able to be with us tonight. We are very delighted to have Elisa Dragodo back as soloist this year and we are pleased that Timothy Carl will again accompany her. We ask that when receiving communion, that you come up the second center aisle and return by the side aisles, making every effort to maintain a space of six feet between you and the person in front of you. Because it was necessary to limit the attendance this evening's Mass is being videotaped. Once it is posted, we will email a link to everyone in attendance. The Mass for this evening is for the Wednesday after the Epiphany, the Feast of St. Andre Basset. Please join Elisa and Tim in our opening hymn, O Come, O Ye Faithful.
our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, I'm delighted to be here at this month. Uh, just take a moment to thank Joan for her kind of invitation to be with you this evening. Actually, uh, when I arrived here today, it immediately fell at like home because besides Tim Carl's service uh, here to your guild in this hospital to be with you for this Mass, He's also the music director at St. Dominic's in Oyster Bay. So, and we had not even discussed that we would be together tonight. So, um, in this beautiful space, we come together to give thanks to God for such an, um, an awesome opportunity to uh, just gather and pray. And tonight I'm going to use the prayers uh, for the Feast of the Epiphany. Uh, you know, we just celebrated the Epiphany on Sunday. Uh, here in the United States, but uh, in a special way um, throughout a lot of the world, this great feast is celebrated today. Um, in Rome, Pope Francis celebrated the Epiphany this morning. Um, so today we join with the Universal Church throughout the world, um, praying these great prayers of the Epiphany. As we come together as God's family this evening, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You came to gather the nations into the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You come to strengthen us in word and sacrament. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You feed us with your body and your blood. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who on this day revealed your only begotten Son to the nations by the guidance of a star, grant in your mercy that we, who already know you by faith, may be brought to behold the beauty of your sublime glory. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, if God so loved us, we also must love one another. No one has ever seen God, yet if we love one another, God remains in us, and his love is brought to perfection in us. This is how we know that we remain in him and he in us, that he has given us of his spirit Moreover, we have seen and testify that the Father sent his Son as a Savior of the world. Whoever acknowledges that Jesus is the Son of God, God remains in him and he in God. We have come to know and to believe in the love God has for us. God is love, and whoever remains in love remains in God and God in him. In this is love brought to perfection among us, that we have confidence on the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear, because fear has to do with punishment, and so one who fears is not yet perfect in love. The word of the Lord. The responsorial psalm, Lord, every nation on earth will adore you. Lord, every nation on earth will adore you. O God, with your judgment endow the king, and with your justice the king's son. He shall govern your people with justice, 
and your afflicted ones with judgment. Lord, every nation on earth will adore you. The kings of Tarshish and the Isles shall offer gifts. The kings of Arabia and Seba shall bring tribute. Lord, every nation on earth will adore you. For he shall rescue the poor when he cries out, and the afflicted when he has no one to help him. He shall have pity for the lowly and the poor. The lives of the poor he shall save. Lord, every nation on earth will adore you. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. Glory to you, O Christ, proclaimed to the Gentiles. Glory to you, O Christ, believed in throughout the world. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you. When Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of King Herod, behold, Magi from the east arrived in Jerusalem, saying, Where is the newborn king of the Jews? We saw his star at its rising and have come to do him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was greatly troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. Assembling all the chief priests and the scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. They said to him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it has been written through the prophet, And you, Bethlehem of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, since from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and ascertained from them the time of the star's appearance. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go search diligently for the child. When you have found him, bring me word that I too may go and do him homage. After their audience with the king, they set out, and behold, the star that they had seen at its rising preceded them, until it came and stopped over the place where the child was. They were overjoyed at seeing the star, and on entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother. They prostrated themselves and did him homage. Then they opened their treasures and offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they departed for their country by another way. The Gospel of the Lord. Just again, so grateful to be able to be here with, with all of you uh, this evening as we uh, give thanks to God for um, the gift of the St. Francis Guild, the gift of all of you especially in this very, very, very unique year. Um, as we celebrate this uh, Tree of Lights Mass, I want to reflect just a little bit on the mystery of light. And that's actually another part of the reason why I wanted to celebrate today the epiphany with all of you. I was on a retreat one time in um, out just about an hour outside of Maryland. And it was a silent retreat. so. Sisters, I'm sure you know, being on a silent retreat, you enter into this retreat, and for five to eight days, it's silence. You talk one hour with your spiritual director a day, and then, of course, in your prayer to the Lord. But other than that, um, it's pretty much silent the whole time. Um, anyway, in one of these hours of silence during this winter time, I decided that it would be good to take a nice walk outside on the beautiful grounds. I think there were probably like over 200 acres, uh, very similar to actually if you visited the Seminary of the Immaculate Conception in Lloyd Harbor, uh, very similar type of property. So I took a walk um, and I went for at least an hour I was out and I just kept walking back and then I realized the sun was beginning to go down. And as I'm in the woods now, uh, saying, all right, it's time to go back. 
I realized that I don't remember the way that I came. <laughs> I got a little lost in the woods. Um, luckily, though, I remembered a little lesson uh, from my childhood uh, that the sun rises in the east and sets in the west, and I kind of had a general understanding of where the retreat house was, and I was able to follow the setting sun pretty quickly. It was like a race to get back to this retreat house because I didn't want to be in darkness. But I was able to follow the light back to the retreat house, back to where I needed to be, back to what I called my home for a week. The Epiphany is this amazing feast of light, if you think about it. I mean, one of the main characters in this story is not even a person. It's the star. It's the star. Herod is fascinated with this star because this is where the, the newborn king would be, and he feels threatened by that. The magi, who are these pagan astrologers, are so fascinated with this star, and they begin to follow it. And where does the star lead them? But to Christ. But to Christ. I think in my own life, there have been plenty of people who have been those stars of Bethlehem for me, who have led me out of a place of darkness to a place of light. And when we get to that place of light, you know what's so beautiful about this story? We hear nothing about the star anymore. The star leads us to the light of the world. He leads us to the newborn king. And we're able to receive that light with great peace and great joy. In a special way, as I look at this tree of lights, as I look at that star on top and the lights on this tree and the cutouts of the lights and the names, I imagine that those 660 names have been lights who have led people out of darkness to the king, the light of the world. They have been signs of great light that have led people to a deeper encounter with Jesus. They've been those stars of Bethlehem. I think on the Feast of the Epiphany, the Lord is calling you and I to be those stars. Individuals as we are who have followed stars in our lives to the King, who have followed people who have led us to a deeper encounter with Christ. When we have those encounters, just like the Magi, we leave changed. We hear in the Gospel today that the Magi, although they were warned in a dream because of Herod, and there was a practical reason there, they still decided to go another way. They left changed forever. See, because an encounter with Jesus Christ, an encounter with the light of the world, changes us. It lights us up. It empowers us to become light for others, to become those stars. As we give thanks today for all of these lights, for all of these stars, these names who we will remember in our hearts forever, as we give thanks to them for leading us to the light. We ask them to pray for us that we may become light for others, so that you and I might become these stars of St. Francis Hospital, of Long Island, of wherever you come from, leading people closer to Jesus, bringing the lost home. I think we can all agree that these days of, of pandemic, these days of, I mean, we all have been watching what's been unfolding today in Washington, D.C., there are a lot of very lost people. There are a lot of very lost people in our world who are seeking to have a deeper encounter with the light who is only peace, with the light who is only joy, with the light 
who leads us out of darkness and embraces us forever. So today, as we reflect on this mystery of light, as we give thanks for these stars of Bethlehem in our lives, let us ask the Lord for the grace to be those stars that light up the world, showing others the path to Jesus, leading them to the light of the world, leading the lost home. I think when we live out our star-like vocations, the world gets a lot brighter, and we can give thanks to God for the great gift of being the light of the world so that we can live eternally with that light in the kingdom. Amen. Trusting that the light of the world embraces all of humanity, we offer our prayers and petitions to our Heavenly Father. Please stand. For Pope Francis and all the church leaders, may they be blessed with the courage to speak the words of Christ and to be his presence in the world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For all those who, sorry, for the leaders of the nations, may they seek God's will, the foundation stone of all true tolerance and respect of peoples. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our, our prayer. For all those who suffer the delusion that grace is of their own making, let us pray to the Lord. And the Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For each of us, May we never grow complacent or satisfied in our own efforts to bring God's kingdom to earth. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the living whose names appear on the tree of life, may they experience God's love for them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the deceased whose names appear on the tree of life, May they attain the kingdom of heaven. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our, our prayer. For the intentions of each one participating in the Tree of Life's Mass, let us pray. Lord, Lord hear our, our prayer. Heavenly Father, you sent your Son to earth and placed him in the loving care of Mary and Joseph. He dwells among us still and intercedes for our needs. We offer our prayers as always in the name of the Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And we ask all of these prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
look with favor, Lord, we pray on these gifts of your church, in which are offered now not gold, frankincense, or myrrh, but he who by them is proclaimed, sacrificed, and received, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for today you have revealed the mystery of our salvation in Christ as a light for the nations. And when he appeared in our mortal nature, you made us new by the glory of his immortal nature. And so, with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and John, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection 
and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles, St. Francis, St. Andre Bessette, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Oh dear. On behalf of all of us, our sincere thanks. Thank you. Our sincere thanks to Father Matt for celebrating this special mass for us and for his beautiful homily. I do hope he can be persuaded to come back again next year. <laughs> we thank Alicia Dragota. Her magnificent voice has added so much to our, to our celebration, and Timothy Hall for his beautiful accompaniment. <laughs> our thanks to Nancy Russo Ramor and her got to put the glasses on and her committee for their untiring efforts to bring about this joyous evening and to Laura Doherty for her special contribution and a very special thank you to sister Pauline whose help and guidance has meant so much in this difficult pandemic year after Mass, you may visit the Tree of Lights and search for names or, and or take photos. However, this year we have been put, had, had to put in place some precautionary measures. After the closing hymn, please form a line on either the left or the right side, outside aisle, keeping a six foot separation from the person in front of you. It, we can only have one person at the tree at a time. Guild members will tell you which side of the tree to look for your, um, look for your names. Please alternate sides. If you need to search for multiple names, please bring a list and a pen so you can mark down the different locations. And then please exit uh, down the center aisle. Thank you all for coming. We wish you a happy and blessed new year. And please join Alicia and Tim in our closing hymn, Joy to the World. Let us pray. Go before us with heavenly light, O Lord, always and everywhere, that we may perceive with clear sight and revere with true affection the mystery in which you have willed us to participate. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen.